Hey guys, what's up? My name is Kayla and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a different kind of video, a video that I feel like God has put on my heart. Um, I know it's been like two weeks since I've posted a video. I actually went out of the country and that's going to kind of tie into my video today. I went out of the country on a solo trip, my second annual solo trip with just God and I, um, led by God. God directed me to go to this specific place. Um, the whole shebang, God took care of me. And that's exactly what this video is gonna be based on today. I felt like God wanted me to share my faith journey and this trip that I took. So, like I said, this is my second annual trip with just the Lord and I. And about six months prior to this trip, God had put it on my heart to go to Ireland. I love to travel. That is like my love language is like quality time and doing things. And God knows that. And so what better way to um, spend time with the Lord? I don't know if you can hear those birds, but they're fighting over a snake. Okay. Anyway, so... What better way to spend time with my Lord and Savior than by doing it through my love language? So he was like, let's go, let's spend some quality time together. Like I said, this is my second annual Jesus trip with just the Lord and I. Um, my second ever solo trip ever. The first one was also with the Lord. And if you guys are interested and you enjoy this... I can share that. I can share my first trip. That is a whole nother story in itself. Um, a year ago, God took me and put it on my heart to go to Hawaii. And this year, God... Um, so basically, God had put it on my heart to go to Ireland. Ireland is not ever a place that I desired to go before. And God started putting it on my heart. Um, I started seeing it everywhere. I started hearing it everywhere. I would look and I would see stickers on the back of people's car with the word Ireland. People would come up to me and just mention Ireland. Like it just started coming everywhere out of nowhere. Um, at the same time that God was putting it on my heart to go to this place. This place that I've never desired to go to before. There's many other places I would desire to go to. But Ireland was actually not one of them. But so about six months out, I booked this trip to Ireland. And I felt like the Lord had told me, don't tell anyone and don't invite anyone. Because I was like, okay, who am I going to invite? Like, what am I going to do? Like, uh, you want me to go to Ireland, God? I've never... I've been out of the country once, but, you know, I've never been out of the country. I've been on one solo trip, and that uh, that, that was in the United States, and I've, n I've been out of the country once, but, you know, going uh, on a solo trip out of the country, I was like, who am I going to invite, God? Like, what are we going to do, you know? God told me, don't tell anyone and don't invite anyone. He told me not to tell anyone because of the spiritual warfare. Um, that's a whole nother story in itself. And I learned from that experience on my trip to Hawaii. Um, you tell you tell people you're going solo. And I was getting so much negativity. Why would you want to go solo? Um, that's so dangerous. You shouldn't be going by yourself. Blah, blah, blah. Like anything you can think of, people will try to talk you out of it. And so basically, the same thing was happening with Ireland, but I decided God told me not to tell anyone until a month out. Then you can tell your parents. Then you can tell, you know, people you're, you're going. And this was all because, you know, it, puts, it starts sowing seeds of doubt. It starts sowing seeds of fear. Um, before my Hawaii trip, I had been telling people, and I started... A week out before I left on my first solo trip, I started having panic attacks, something I'd never had before. So two weeks, about, I would say about two weeks before this trip to Ireland, I had been asking God for dreams or visions. 
um, this is something God had done for me specifically for my trip for Hawaii before. God had given me dreams and he had given me visions of me and Hawaii, um, even up to years before ever going. And so that was something I was kind of expecting. I was like, okay, God, you'd done this for me for my last trip. So if you are really want me to go and I'm not out of my mind, please give me dreams and visions. Well, that's not always how God works. So about a week before leaving, I didn't have any dreams. I didn't have any visions all the way up to leaving. But a week before, out of nowhere, randomly, it's like my eyes were opened to four leaf clovers um, or three leaf, you know, those little clover things. I had not noticed them anywhere. All of a sudden, for about three or four days before my trip, I started just seeing them everywhere. It, it was like they were just randomly catching my eye. It was the weirdest thing. Um, I would look down and I would just be walking and then I'd look down and see like a patch of concrete like outside my door. And then I would just notice these this grass that had been growing there for years, you know, and I just never really paid any attention to it. I looked down and I noticed it's patches of clover, clovers. And I'm walking down the street and I'm, I'm seeing clovers on this. I'm looking at, um, at like name brands on my clothing and I'm seeing like a clover beside it. And I'm like, whoa, like, you know. And so, you know, I'd been asking God for this confirmation through dreams and visions. Well, I didn't get that, but I started seeing clovers everywhere. It was actually kind of cool. Um, I wasn't looking for them. I know some people will be like, oh, blah, 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 you know, signs, these re religious people that don't think God can speak to you through anything. He can give you signs and stuff if he wants to. And so I started seeing clovers everywhere, wasn't looking for them. Um, and after about the fourth time, I really kind of like picked up on it, like, 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 oh, that, like, God, is that you speaking to me? Because like, why am I randomly noticing clovers all of a sudden? Like, it's one thing to just, like, notice it and be like, oh, look, a four-leaf clover. But then after, the, like, the third or fourth time, I was like, okay. Like, God is, that, God, is that you? And then I kept seeing it. You know, the whole point of this trip was to spend time with God. I, um, and I was going to have fun. And I was going to evangelize. And so, I'm going to share with you guys this because I... I want it to be inspiring to y'all, um, and I want to give you guys ideas and how you can be creative. So, I evangelize in my hometown all the time. Um, there's probably rarely ever a day goes by that I don't speak to at least one person that I feel like God is just putting on my heart. Like I just can't, I like I just can't not do it. So that's who I am, and. I believe God wants everyone to evangelize, but um, evangelist is different. Anyway, um, it's important that we all evangelize. So, ways that I evangelize is I feel like I'm kind of awkward. And so, just going up to people and being like, hey, Jesus loves you, you know, that's kind of weird. Um, so I always like to have something with me, not all the time, not all the time. Uh, it doesn't always work that way, but I would say probably like 70% of the time I'll have something with me. And so I buy these like salvation tracks. I've bought so many different kinds. There's different ones. There's ones for people that are atheists. There's ones for you to minister to people who maybe believe in God or, you know, are seeking God. So like this one says, have you made the wonderful discovery of the spirit filled life? So these are like for people that are on their way to knowing God, just haven't been like filled with the spirit of God um, and going further in their walk. And then there's ones like this three uh it says 316 the numbers of hope and that's for people you know who maybe believe in god but have not fully dedicated and gotten saved so these are one of the ways it's like a little 
open door like like here i'm giving you something it, it, it just kind of like makes the process easier and so i hand out those salvation tracks sometimes and then also i um i'm very artsy and so another way to get creative and to like have that open door to to where i can just go up and start speaking to them or you know where it's not in an awkward way or not feeling like you know real churchy or religious i make crosses for rear view mirrors what you go up and you tell them kind of, is there anything i can pray for you about or um hey like if god has given you a word for that person sometimes god has given me words like i'll just feel like what they're feeling like are you feeling heartbroken you know my heart like hurts for you like is there something going on and i've had people tell me like yeah like um their brother just committed suicide or um you know i've had people tell me some crazy things that and god was putting on my heart so yeah it's just like an open door to be able to go and, and preach the gospel and um it's how i do it it's 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 a lot easier for me to do it that way and so yeah on my trip i went and i evangelized you can get these salvation tracks through christianbook.com there's all different kinds or there's some you can get on amazon they're more expensive but christianbook.com is a great um website i recommend it usually takes about a week maybe to get them i think they're about two to four dollars for a 25 pack but you know you're investing into the kingdom of god you're planting seeds or you're watering seeds anyway so on this trip everything went super well i had a great time you know i made probably not the wisest decision when i booked my flight i decided to book an overnight um <laughs> and so i left at like 11 a.m here from florida and then flew to charlotte north carolina and then um took a red eye overnight didn't really get much sleep and it's, there's a six hour time difference so we jumped forward six hours so basically i landed in ireland at like 5 a.m um and yeah so basically i went a whole night without sleep and me being super smart decided okay kayla I'm gonna fly into dublin and then i'm gonna take an hour train an hour two hour train to a small town outside of dublin and so it was just a long day but the lord was in it i got through it i was up for like 24 hours um besides like little dozing off and stuff like throughout but anyway i get there the people are so friendly in ireland they're so nice and i asked the lady like hey i know it's like 9 or 10 a.m here is there any way you know i can get a room i can get my room i know check-ins not to like 4 p.m there and um i was like is there any way i can get my room like i'm so tired i hadn't slept like i even have to pay for last night and tonight like that's fine i just want to be able to get a room and you know get to get to be able to sleep some and um i had to wait about an hour but she gave me a room and it was like five hours five or six hours before check-in she didn't charge me for the night before she only charged me for that one night i stayed and god was so in this god he was so in every trip that you know if you invite the lord to your plans he is in it okay and so not only did she give me the room but i got upgraded to a suite and it was such a nice room it was so amazing okay so amazing and so throughout this whole trip i never felt like unsafe i knew the lord was in it i knew he was with me and you know that he had orchestrated this one thing that God kept telling me throughout the process is I'm going to take care of you. That's just like what I kept hearing, what I kept feeling. I'm going to take care of you. It was so nice. Everything was taken care of, upgraded. I had the nicest breakfast and man, guys, it was phenomenal. Um, 
and so I never felt unsafe and one thing that I had planned to do was to start reading a book that was recommended to me I'm not okay so I'm not a big reader at all I don't like reading I watch stuff all the time uh, I know it sounds bad. It sounds bad, but I tried to read for the Lord. Anyway, so one of the things I wanted to do on this trip was read the word, but also I wanted to start reading this book. And so I brought, I bought a book that was really recommended by one of my favorite prophets and it's called One Minute with God. And so I got about halfway through it. And it's such a great book. Okay, so it talks about how just one minute with God can change everything. And um, really a great book. And it's by Keith Ellis, which is a prophet, seer, evangelist, and author. Wow. Okay. So one minute with God can change everything. One minute with God. Um, just receiving a word from God. One minute with God where your disease can be supernatural, supernaturally healed. One minute with God where, you know, just all it takes is one minute for God to do something in one minute and it can change your life. And I love that. I love that. And so I was reading that and man, did it really fire me up the second half of my trip to go and start evangelizing to everyone. So with that being said, started reading that book and I got about halfway through it. I said, I'm not a big reader, so reading like a chapter a day, um, you know, 15, 15 pages or so. That was a big deal for me, but so good. And I recommend it anyway. While on this trip, I, you know, I'd been asking the Lord for a dream. Um, I'd have been asking the Lord for a dream before because that's what he did, uh, for me, for my trip to Hawaii. Never got a dream. But while I was on the trip, I had had two moments where I had a dream come to pass. And one of those moments was like just so like, wow, like mind blowing for me. I was on a tour and I was talking to the, the guy who um, drove the bus and, you know, he was our tour director. I remember saying something like, we don't have sheep like that in Florida. You know, one of the things was, as I wanted to see the sheep. I wanted to get close and see the sheep. And I was telling them, we don't have sheep like that in Florida. And as soon as I said it, it was like I had seen that moment and I dreamed it before. But in my dream, I didn't, I remembered the dream as soon as I said that. But the thing is, is I didn't know that in that dream that I had, that I was in Ireland. And so when I, when I realized God had given me a dream, like my mind was just so blown. It was so amazing. I was talking to the guy and I had to like stop because I, like when that happened, I almost started crying. Like, <laughs> oh, I could start crying now. Like, oh my gosh, God had given me a dream. You know, he did. And I just didn't know it. I just didn't know that I was in Ireland in that dream. And it was just so amazing. God is so intentional. So I had a dream come to pass while in Ireland. And then while um, evangelizing, it was it was so great. I'm going to share just a few little stories. Because sometimes it can be hard to evangelize. Um, and sometimes people don't receive it or they don't want to hear it. But there's other times and other moments where it's like so special. Oh, I could cry. Okay, so I had seen these two young boys in this town, and they were about 10 or 11. And now in Ireland, it's super safe. Like, all the kids walk to and from everywhere. They walk to school. So they had on their uniform, and they had, like, their little um, sports things. And I saw them, and I was like, oh, I want to go give them a cross, okay? So they are about 10 or 11, and I run across the street, and I see them, and I start talking to them, and I'm like, you know, just like, God values you guys so much, and he loves you and desires to have a relationship with you, and, you know, I'm just, you know, telling them about God and Jesus, and the whole time they were just, like, looking at the cross, and they were like, thank you so much, like, thank you, thank you, and they just wouldn't stop saying thank you and, like, looking at the cross, and I remember I ran back across the street, and um, you know, they went on their way and I turned back to kind of like look at them 
um because they had walked they had kept walking and they they turned back to look at me and at the same time they were like thank you and I was just like my heart um and there's just so many special moments I was in one town in Ireland and I'd seen this family it was like two brothers and their wives and one of them had a kid and uh and so it's like a whole group of people and I'd seen them in like this in like one town in Ireland and I'd really noticed them they sat across me from the restaurant um and I just you know there wasn't many people in the restaurant and I'd really noticed them and so several days later I was in a whole nother town on the other side of Ireland probably like seven hours away and I stopped in this small town just to like look for an hour I was on my way to back to Dublin and just a random just a random village in Ireland and I see them and um God wanted me to minister to them and so I did I was like out of all of Ireland I run into you guys again like what is the odds like th there was no there was like point zero 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 one percent chance of that happening honestly and so I ran into them out of all people and um ministered to them and they just received it so well and it was so encouraging and even um the last three of the nine nights I stayed in a hostel and um just to try to meet some people and and uh evangelize to them and one of the girls you know just it was just so encouraging God had put on my heart so heavily to evangelize to this girl and after me you know just spilling everything like Jesus is coming back and he's coming back and he like wants that relationship with you and literally no joke she was she was like my mom's been telling me that same thing but you know hearing it from me I felt like she really received it because it, it was just different you know sometimes uh people they don't receive things from their family it takes someone else and so I felt like she really received that and she like just seemed like she was gonna cry and it was just such great moments such great moments and so many great so there was so much driving in this and I hope I'm gonna go through all my Ireland videos and like post a, uh, a full video of my trip to Ireland. I got a rental car and so I drove everywhere on the opposite side of the road, really crazy, but it gave me so much one-on-one -on -one time with God in the car and um, reading that book at night and you know, just talking with God everywhere I went. It was just an evangelizing to everyone that I felt like God wanted me to evangelize to even like a homeless outreach and I sat there and prayed over her you know so I really was so great I had so many great things you know I went and did archery lessons and I did all these beautiful hikes but I also like really God used me and this is for everyone God wants to do this with everyone like if you're traveling if you're in your hometown like God can use you anywhere um, God wants to be a part of your plans, okay? So, and at one point during this trip, you know, I kept getting all these upgrades. People kept, like, upgrading things for me. It was so amazing. God was so in it. And at one point, you know, I'd really been desiring a God encounter, especially reading this book, you know, One Minute with God Can Change Everything. I had a vision and God specifically spoke to me and my life and my situation that I have going on. And it was just absolutely crazy. But God is so intentional um, and he loves us so much. And he desires that time with us and he desires to speak to us. He desires to use us and he wants us to have a good time. You know, he doesn't want us to be miserable. And he knows that I love traveling. He knows that I love going out. And I love doing things like like taking that archery lesson and and going on these beautiful hikes, right? But in that in those moments, God used me to to speak to people, to minister to people in Ireland, um, and to share the gospel while there. I also got to see like the Book of Kells, 
which is like a mid it's the gospel but they um in that time period it was like the medieval times so they had redid the the bible but they did it in like a medieval like twist so that, like they rewrote out the bible and um i always think of like sh like shrek or something you know like once upon a time but they did it in like this artsy medieval medieval style um of the gospel it's so cool and i got to see like um things of christ and and like the i think it's uh, the Irish version of all these like religious uh, historical sites and it was just so beautiful God really took care of me and you know so if God puts on your heart anything like God's gonna take care of you in that process this is this was my faith trip journey and it was my second one and God didn't disappoint um, you know he took care of me and he was able to use me and to minister to others and everything was so so wonderful I'm, and I met so many great people and I know I touched lives and so I hope this is encouraging to you guys if you would like to hear my Hawaii trip you know um feel free to comment if you have any questions whatever hit the like button to support my channel subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more but I love you guys and I'll be back as the spirit leads so yeah bye guys